and welcome to Heathen Hearth. Welcome back to another episode. This week, we're making a hail and horn gathering recipe. Actually, it's probably the most popular hail and horn gathering recipe. It's called Appelflesk in Danish and Appleflesh in English. This week, you may notice that we have a guest chef on the show. This is my daughter Kadri, Kadri Lawrence, and um, she's here for um, a very particular reason. Do you want to tell them why you're here, Kadri? Well, I requested this recipe. I was thinking about it as I had the ingredients in my fridge, but didn't know how to make the delicious food. So I asked if we could uh, do this recipe together uh, so that I can make it at home. So this week, uh, it's apple flesh, and this is a Danish dish that is uh, very common but dishes like this are similar throughout Scandinavia. It's about as simple as it gets. The basic ingredients are just apples and the flesh, the bacon. And you really don't need much else. There's a lot of recipes that use other types of ingredients. So you might see things like onions, you might see uh, sugar, or before that it probably would have been honey. You might see extra salt added, those types of things. And there's lots of different um, methods of preparing it. This method turns it into a sort of butter-like spread that is absolutely fabulous on bread. It's really, really good with uh, sometimes to add to another meat. You can add it to vegetables because it does both meat and fruit. You can basically add it to anything to make it taste good. It's just, it ends up being really, really good. So what we're going to do is uh, prepare these ingredients and show you uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, actually, you know what, since, uh, since I'm here, uh, what I'll do is I'll explain to you what we're doing. These are the apples and what you need for the apples are two different kinds. Um, we only have, we have three of one kind and one of another. I think we have Macintosh and um, Royal Gala. Usually what you want to do is choose one really sweet apple uh, that falls apart easily like Macintosh, uh, like a cooking apple, and then one that's like a tart eating apple that stays firm. That way you can have the differences in textures in the final product and it increases the depth of flavor. I often use the green Granny Smith and um, something like a Royal Gala or a Fuji for the, uh, for the other type because I don't, really don't like Macintosh all that much, even though Macintosh arose at a farm near Peterborough. So that was the first place it was actually ever cultivated. So it's a Canadian uh, cultivar. This, uh, this um, pork is from Happy Pig. It's from the Black Pig Heritage Breed from Upper Canada Meats. I'll put a link in the description if you want to uh, go to their business as well. It's excellent, excellent uh, meat. I also have, uh, I'm going to be um, maybe adding some salt if the bacon isn't salty enough. Sometimes it is, but we're going to taste. Uh, this is uh, smoked salt to add an extra smoky flavor since unfortunately we can't ca cook over a campfire today. Uh, this tastes really good when it's cooked over an open fire. And in case the apples aren't sweet enough um, and it doesn't caramelize enough, we have a little bit of honey as well. Uh, but this, both the honey and the salt, again, are optional ingredients. And to, the thing to think about for this is that it's a very simple recipe. All you need is double the weight in peeled and prepared apples to whatever bacon you've got. And that's it. So you can make it any size you want. And then the, the sugar that you add, the honey or what have you, is just to taste, uh, to caramelize a little bit more. And then the salt is to taste as well. So it's, it's about as dead simple as possible. The thing is, you have to watch what we do because the preparation method really makes it. Otherwise, it'll just turn into applesauce with soggy bacon in it. And you don't want that. <laughs> so here we go. The Hale and Horn Gathering is a religious event that takes place every Canada Day long weekend at Raven's Knoll. Raven's Knoll is a campground and event centre run for the pagan and heathen spiritual communities. It's located about 1.5 hours outside of Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, on the Bonnechere River near Golden Lake, Ontario. A link to the website will be provided down in the description if you're interested. The Hale and Horn Gathering is for those who are interested in participating in a modern Canadian way of practicing Old Norse religion and Old Germanic spirituality. The event is open to anyone, regardless of heritage, belief, or identity. Groups attend from far and wide, from many different heathen and astral organizations, kindreds, hearths, and study groups, as well as solitary followers of the old gods. The gathering revolves around three related rituals, a blot, where a god pole is raised in a sacred outdoor sanctuary called a ve, a sambal, 
where the folk attending toast the virtues of life, and a husso, where the folk share in a feast dedicated to the gods. Each year, the event focuses on a different god. The husso is always inspired by the foodways of ancient northern Europe and Nordic mythology. The first year we had apple flesh was the year we honored Frigg. Then we had it again during the year we honored Thor. Now it looks like it will be on the menu every year because it is so popular. One of the reasons apple flesh is appropriate for any of the Hussle feasts is that the apple had a sacred meaning in Norse mythology and Germanic culture. And actually, it still does today, for those of us who respect this tradition at least. The goddess Idun's main symbol are her magical golden apples. Eating them is what provides the gods with their immortality. The Old Norse word for apple was epli. As with older forms of English and other Germanic languages, the word for apple denotes the species we now call apple, but it was also the general name for any kind of tree fruit. That is why in English so many plants have hyphenated names with apple in the compound word. Take for instance the pineapple, the infamous thorn apple, the custard apple, the rose apple, and on and on. This use of language denotes the central importance of apples to the early Germanic peoples. That old adage, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, is a good one, because tree fruit can be a good source of the nutrients not provided by meat, grain, dairy, or fish. It is quite literally a source of health. It was a food loved by both gods and humans. For this version of apple flesh, the apples need to be peeled and cored. I like to chop them up into cubes about the size of the end of a thumb. Chop them roughly so that you get some smaller bits too. The rough chop is important because that is what will give you a diversity of textures in the final product. Another reason apple flesh is appropriate for many hustle feasts is because it is made with the meat of swine, bacon. Pigs and pork feature prominently in Old Norse and Old Germanic iconography, archaeological evidence, and textual sources. Although more directly associated with some gods than others, such as Frey and Freya and Odin, the meat from pigs was a noted food of the gods. For instance, the meat of the ever-renewing feasts in the Valhall, where Odin feasts the valiant dead, is the flesh of the forever reborn boar Sahrimir. As such, it is one of the archetypal meats most appropriate for bloat. And, unlike the meat of cows or horses, the less expensive pig was more within the reach of common folk when they made offerings to the gods. Both apples and bacon keep for quite a long period of time without refrigeration. So this dish, or version of it, could have been made throughout much of the year, unlike a lot of the other recipes in pre-industrial periods. The bacon should be sliced finely before you start to cook it. This way, the lard renders more quickly and evenly from the flesh. This way, all of the bacon will be evenly crisped, which is harder to accomplish in a pan with whole rashers of bacon. The first step is to fry off the bacon and get all the bits nice and crispy. Kadri had some major restraint here because she didn't eat any of it. it smelled so good. bacon from the rendered fat and put it aside. Make sure it is out of reach of pets and hungry friends and family. You only make that mistake once.
Now take the apples you've prepared and fry them in the fat. No, don't drain off the fat. I know what you might be thinking. You need all of that fat, its flavor, and it's required for the recipe. The frying step will take quite a while. At this stage, we're removing some of the juice from the apples, caramelizing the sugars in the apples, and boiling off liquid. It helps to be using a fairly wide pan for this step in order to reduce the time this whole thing takes. When one of the apple varieties starts to fall apart, roughly mash the apples a bit with a masher or the back of your spoon. You want the mixture to get to the consistency you see here. Taste the apples to see if they have the level of salt and sugar that is to your taste. Add a bit of salt or honey to calibrate the taste to your liking. We didn't need any here. Then it's just a matter of mixing the bacon bits back into the cooked apple mixture and spooning the mixture into clean jars. The dish actually tastes best after a day or two in the fridge. And it seems to taste better when served at a temperature slightly below room temperature. So let it warm up a bit after you take it out of the fridge before eating it. But it tastes so good we tend to eat it before it has time to age any time in the fridge. We solved this problem by making extra. You should too. We're finished and the room is smelling amazing with the smell of smoky bacon and the sweet apple smell and um, this is a familiar flavor in this house and our, our mouths are watering a little, I think. Um, so I have uh, mine on uh, Danish rye bread because I love Danish rye bread and Kadri has hers on a nice crisp cracker and uh, she's going to take a bite first and uh, talk about the flavor while I uh, talk about this. This is um, having an open fit. This open face is uh, something that the Danes do. Um, obviously Smirboy, the uh, open face sandwiches are um, something that uh, is modern Danish. Um, I know that since in the Viking age, it appears that a lot of the uh, breads are flat breads. Um, they would have had smears on them. And um, we know from old Anglo-Saxon English that the word for a relish or something that you add to food, um, this would have been considered a relish of, of that kind. And um, the word in a lot of Scandinavian languages for a topping like this is basically smear or smear, smear on things. Uh, it's still used in lit Yiddish. It's come into modern uh, um, slang on the east coast of the US that way. And uh, so this is a delicious um, smear that um, you know, it's the ingredients that were around during the Viking Age, so it could have been something that was cooked. We know that it is uh, a very common modern uh, modern dish, and uh, 
I'm gonna stop talking and she's gonna tell you what she thought of it. It's so it to you. good. I ate mine already. I really like the sweet and the salty together. It's a perfect combination. Mm. It's so good. Mm, yeah. And, and there's the crunch and the soft as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's about it's, a, it's about the texture because it has a even some of the apples has the sort of the buttery apple and then it has the tartar apple. I also like them not only sweet and salty, but there's also a sour component from the tart apples. But it's just really good. Mm. And that, um, this bacon is just really high quality bacon. Yeah, it's really good. You can mm -hmm. even, when we were cooking it, you could smell it. smells really, really yummy too. Mm-hmm. Mm. So good. I wish we had more ingredients. You gotta make more. Mm-hmm. Gotta make more. <laughs> We only had four, four, I only had four apples in the fridge. I should have gone out and bought like an entire bag because um, this is a fair amount of effort, but it is so worth it. And so you, it. you think it looks simple and you're like, oh, those things won't be good together. No, it is amazing. It's just like a mind altering experience. I don't know why, that's just so delicious. Yeah, mm. one of my favorites, so good. Yeah, so now you know the secret of how to make it. So you, a lot of people have these kinds of ingredients in their fridge. All you need is the technique and the patience to make it. So get eating that apple flesh. So I'd love to see your pictures, um, share them on uh, social media and uh, send them to me um, at my email address. I'll be writing it in the comments section. That way, when I get enough pictures together, I'll put a montage of everyone's um, dishes. It doesn't have to be this one either. It can be any of them. So till next time, keep cooking. I'd love it if you would share this channel with people you think might be interested. Remember, you can enter the prize contest anytime before this channel has 777 subscribers, just by commenting on the 500 celebration subscriber video. Please follow me on the social media channels of your choice, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Tumblr. I'll throw a couple links on the screen too. The top one is for a playlist of all of my Nordic Way recipes. The bottom one is for a past recipe uh, served at the Hale and Horn Gathering. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to this channel and remember to hit the bell so you get notifications. Thanks everybody!